So, what's the hardest word to say? I've been told that it's supercadrafragilistic expialidocious. But I think the hardest word to say is suicide. Suicide is hard to talk about, but when nobody talks about it, nothing gets done. Suicide is now the third leading cause of death for teenagers worldwide. And I don't want to live in a world that does nothing about suicide, because if we can't protect the youth from themselves, then what hope have we of improving the world, making it a nicer place to live? Now there's two things that we can do, and the first we can, we can all do. We just need to reach out to people who are in need, who are isolated, especially during the pandemic. A little goes a long way. So just check in if you know someone who's struggling. The second thing we can do is we can think of new ways to treat depression. And this is where I come in. So, hi, hello, my name is Liam, and I study depression by looking at the brain. And today I'm here to tell you why my research has been making news headlines, because it is showing that depression does indeed change the structure of the human brain in a way in which we've never made a drug to change. So today I'm going to show you exactly how my results are showing this new way of making antidepressants, which might provide better outcomes for people who are struggling. So let's talk about what it is that I actually do. So, okay, bear with me, but I look at dead people's brains and it's not at all like CSI Miami, no, but it is kind of fascinating to see the real human brain. And I'd just like to say that tissue donation is profoundly important to human research. It helps drug discovery and our understanding of what's going on in the mind really, really much. So anyone who's considered tissue donation is a fantastic resource for research. So okay, I know what you're thinking. He looks at the human brain, so he's probably looking at those neurons, those nerve cells, right, that everyone always talks about. No. I, I look at what I like to call the real stars of the show. They're called astrocytes. They're a different type of brain cell. They're star-shaped cells. And what they do is they give energy to the neurons so the neurons can work. These star-shaped cells, they, they wrap around blood vessels and they send sugar and energy from the bloodstream to the neurons. The neurons can fire nerve impulses. And so if you're following me, you would think that if something went wrong with the astrocytes, something would go wrong with the neurons too. The neurons wouldn't be able to work like they normally do. So why am I looking at astrocytes in post-mortem brain tissue? It's because a lot of research has shown that astrocytes might be infected in people who died with depression. The proteins that are made by astrocytes are at lower levels in people who have died by depression. And until now, no one has done a comprehensive survey under the microscope of what's going on with these cells. There have been many small studies which have seen changes in astrocytes until now. But with my study, I looked at four brain regions with two different ways of looking at astrocytes. I looked at two different proteins. My main findings, before I get into them, I just want to briefly plug something that I did in 2018. Before this project, I collaborated with a Montreal-based artist, Elizabeth Parent, through the Convergence Initiative. We made a massive metal sculpture of an astrocyte, and I showed, together with this artist, how astrocytes are thought to be changed in depression. And if you're interested in any of this, I really encourage you to look that up. But what did I do with my study? What is it that I did to make these news, news headlines? So I counted and I drew the structure of astrocytes in people who died by suicide who were depressed. 
we had 10 people who were depressed who died by suicide and 10 people of the same age who died by natural organic causes. And I looked at four different brain regions under the microscope and amazingly, I found some really big differences. I found two to 20 times fewer astrocytes in people who died by suicide. That's a massive change. And I did it using two different ways of looking at astrocytes because we weren't sure if what we were seeing was true. But surprisingly, the astrocytes that were still in the brains of people who died with depression, they had the same shape. And we thought that the shape was actually going to change because that normally shows that the cells are unhealthy. So that was also a surprise to us. So what does this research mean? Why are people talking about it? Well, we've never made a drug that works on astrocytes in the human brain. So we don't know what could happen if we made an antidepressant that worked on these cells. Clearly they're involved in depression and there are plenty of ways that we could make drugs that would work on these cells. Another key thing is that ketamine, which has recently been approved uh, by the FDA in 2019, the only known mechanism for it in, in depression, the best mechanism, is working on astrocytes in mouse models. So ketamine is the only antidepressant which works fast enough to intervene in a suicide crisis because a lot of antidepressants can take up to two weeks and that's not enough, that's just too slow. It's too slow to help people who are really at a crisis. So my research shows that if we might make a drug that works on astrocytes, we might have better outcomes for depression, or we might have better ways to intervene to prevent suicide. All of my research is freely available to the public and there are news reports out there if you want to read more. You can email me if you have any further questions and thank you for listening.